He is not good, so he must be weevil. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragman girl. Sunday, you kissed my wife. Baby, my heart's on fire. Legacy Evolution tops off the original Generation 1 Insecticon trio with Deluxe Bombshell. Each Insecticon, except Kickback, had some kind of special power to compensate for their smaller size. Bombshell's gimmick was that his... Probiscus could fire Cerebro shells that could control the minds of any Transformer. Good for him. See the fancy art on the front and the figure through the eco-sucky hole in the box. Enjoy 50% of the Legacy Evolution splash art on the side panel. Then look at photos of both modes on the back and a peek at the crummy Evo Fusion gimmick. See the robot mode artwork on the other side. Now let's get Bombshell out of this box and give him a beetling. <laughs> out of box Legacy Deluxe Bombshell comes with his instruction booklet. A gray plastic silver painted gun accessory. And two black plastic Evo fusion weapons which double as his rear insect legs. To utilize the Evo Fusion gimmick, you take the silver painted gun accessory and plug the black gun accessories into it, making it a triple gun weapon accessory. Lame. Legacy Deluxe Bombshell's alt mode is a beetle. Or it's supposed to be. It looks kind of like a bull weevil to me. But others say it's actually a rhinoceros beetle. Whatever it may be, it definitely lacks anatomical accuracy in this figure. Bombshell was sadly denied having an original mold. Instead, Hasbro took the lazy man's escape of revamping the shrapnel mold, which you can probably tell just by looking at the back end. But let's avoid that for the moment and show off what they did right. The colors are black and purple, relatively Generation 1 accurate, along with yellow bug eyes and a silver proboscis, which was his main feature in Generation 1. He's got some weight to him and holds together well with no rattling. As with shrapnel, the bombshell remold has a goodly amount of sculpted detail, and the parts which have paint and decals seem to have all been neatly applied. The fake hatch on his chest doesn't open or close, but it does have molded detail underneath. Looking close, you will notice that the front half and the back half of the beetle don't really match. The front has more curves to it and a smoother flow, while the back end is angular and boxy. They didn't remold this section differently much from shrapnel at all. And it makes the figure look as if the designers called for an early lunch when they were only halfway through. Because Bombshell was cool enough that he deserved much better than this. To have his butt end made the butt end of the design process was a bit of an insult to the character and to collectors. And if it looks like it's not sitting properly, you're right. Another bad feature they yoinked over from Legacy Shrapnel is that the rear insect legs are made with parts forming. You take the black Evo Fusion weapons and plug them into the 5mm ports underneath. And this will help the figure sit level, as well as providing weapon storage. The problem is those legs are hidden underneath the figure and completely obscured, which only draws attention to the mismatched nature of the back portions. The shrapnel figure hid it better, but these big chunks missing from the back are really obvious on Bombshell. And while there isn't much actual hollowness on the figure, this section sticks out like a sore thumb. The lopsided meshing of the front and the back makes the front insect legs look short and stubby. One thing I hope a third party company would do is to make an add-on set of insect legs. The front forelegs have these tiny ports at the back. They can be detached from the robot's shoulders, and this allows them to hinge up and down. Click it into place and it holds firmly, but it also has this small port, which could easily fit a plug-in accessory that would make another leg that would angle outwards and widen the insect profile a bit. And these ports on the back could accommodate an accessory that would plug in and fill this big gappy section. A rounded canopy enclosure would seal this portion off, hide the robot parts, and make it look more rounded and beetle-like. There's not much articulation. You can angle the proboscis up or down. You can untab the forelegs to raise and lower them slightly. And you can swivel the rear legs so that they're pointing outward. There are two ports on the top for weapon storage or for the placement of fire blast accessories. There are these two exposed ports also on the back. 
two ports underneath where you plug in the Evo fusion weapons. And the proboscis can also be fitted with a fire blast accessory. <laughs> but the figure doesn't have other ports for accessorization, unless... The robot forearms tab underneath the beetle alt mode. And the instructions have you orient the robot arms so that these ports are pointing downward. However, if you angle the arms down and rotate them, you'll notice that each side of the forearm has a tab extending upward, which is meant to plug into these tabs on the robot thighs. You can rotate the robot forearms so that the 5mm port is pointing outward, and then tab the forearm in as normal. The side panel of the robot shin has this indentation, which seems to have been made to fit this 5mm port. Once the port is pointed outward, you can plug in the Evo Fusion weapon again, and this provides another alternative for exposing the rear insect legs, and still allows him to sit level. In my opinion, this looks much better than the default configuration, and this is how I will likely display Bombshell when he's in alt mode. It's not perfect by any stretch, but it will do until such time as DNA or FONF come out with an upgrade kit to address this more satisfactorily. All in all, I found the insect mode to be disappointing. It really does look like two different figures got stuck together, and I wish the designers had tried harder. If they had added the ability to swivel the front legs from side to side, and another pair of add-in legs, this could have been much better. But alas, if only. Transforming Bombshell is pretty darn simple. He doesn't even have as many steps as Shrapnel. To transform Bombshell, first de-accessorize. Untab the robot forearms from underneath, then untab the shins. Like with Shrapnel, the robot thighs are tabbed in underneath with a double hinge set which extends outwards, angles up, and become the robot thighs. Then you swivel these panels which were aimed out at the side, Close them up and tab them in, separate the legs, and flip out these portions to become the robot feet. Then give the waist a 180 degree twist. The arms which were underneath the beetle swivel outwards on their eyeballs and click into place. Flip out the robot fists from inside the forearms and rotate the arms so that the elbow and the fists are pointed forward properly. The front section of the beetle head Angles backward to expose the robot head. Then angle the proboscis to become the mortar launcher which is on top of Bombshell's noodle. One part that isn't in the instructions is that there is this little bracket underneath. It doesn't say which direction it's supposed to be oriented. But if you fold it down, then the crest over the head will have no obstruction to folding forwards and backwards. Fold it up, and it will block it from going back too far. Legacy Bombshell is slightly less repulsive in robot mode, or at least the lower portions of the body don't seem as out of place. The colors are the same, purple, yellow, black, and some silver, and some temp decals for extra zazz. He's got the mortar launcher, but the crest doesn't conform to the head very well. The mortar itself won't angle down all the way, so it's always going to be angled up and forward, and it will never lie completely flush. But he does have that sinister head with the angled slotted mouth, which looks so cool. The upper insect body forms a decently proportioned torso, with the insect eyes becoming the shoulders, and the robot arms, waist, and thighs, and shins following the appearance of shrapnel from which they were taken. The shoulders have different molding, and obviously the chest portions are very different, but the elbows and forearms are identical, except for the colors. The thighs and shins are identical, except for the paint job. Shrapnel's pinstriping got moved to the bottom of Bombshell shins instead, and Bombshell didn't get those funky purple toes with gold stripes. Bombshell can hold his guns in either hand. He can use the Evo Fusion as pistols, or still Evo Fusion them as add-ons to the main gun. The only other open ports he has are on the backs of the shins, and on the bottoms of the feet. Each weapon can be fitted with a fire blast accessory, and so can the mortar launcher on his head. As with Shrapnel, Bombshell has this mini port on the back of his pelvis. No one's ever really explained what this port is for exactly. None of the default weapons will fit into it, but it can be fitted with the weapon accessories from any core-sized figure, but you gotta wonder... why? The robot head is actually immobile. It's attached to the crest, 
and it won't rotate to the left or to the right unless you rotate the entire crest along with it. Each shoulder will do a full rotation. Each shoulder will angle up a fair degree until this part crashing starts. But you can detach the leg, angle it outwards, and get more range of motion. You can square the arms backwards if you include the transformation joint. There's an upper bicep swivel. Each elbow will angle slightly over 90 degrees. The hands will fold in and out. There's 360 degree waist rotation. The legs will kick forward this far and kick backwards this far. They'll also angle outwards for high steppin' kicks. The thighs are mushroom pegged in and will do a full rotation. The knees will angle backwards 90 degrees. There's also the ankle pivot. And the toes will fold down as part of the transformation. Unfortunately, there are no rear heel spurs. So Bombshell suffers from the same problem that Shrapnel did, in that it doesn't take much to knock him over. So be careful when posing. His center of gravity will always be dragging him just a little bit backwards. But based as he is on the shrapnel mold, you can get some good posing out of him, so he'll fit in well with the other Insecticons. Here's Legacy Evolution Deluxe Bombshell, next to Combiner Wars Legends Bombshell. Here's Legacy Deluxe Bombshell, next to Legacy Deluxe Shrapnel. And here is Legacy Deluxe Bombshell, next to Generation Selects Voyager Cyclonus. Was he made using Bombshell's body? You decide. <laughs> the Legacy Evolution line is rightly praised for focusing on Transformer sub-factions. They put a lot of time and effort into making good additions to the Junkions. The Insecticons were the Decepticon sub-faction that was supposed to have been developed. However, Hasbro seemed to sink all their energy into the Junkion and had little left for anything else. Kickback was okay. Shrapnel was excellent, but using Shrapnel's mold as the base for Bombshell didn't produce a quality result. Positives are good colors, solid construction, some good playability, and he tops off the original three Insecticons with a modern update that has good articulation and an easy transformation. Negatives are that the alt mode just isn't good. The updated upper body doesn't mesh well with the totally not updated lower body. The transformation is almost too easy. The robot head doesn't capture the full Generation 1 aesthetic. There aren't that many options to accessorize Rise, and the back half of the insect mode really needs a different setup. They should have remolded that as well to make it more rounded, and added two more insect legs for an even six. The alt mode has almost no articulation, and you will probably be left scratching your head and wondering what the alt mode is even supposed to be if you use the default configuration. The designers may have presumed that third-party developers would fix whatever they gave up on, but relying on other people to do your work for you instead of doing the job right yourself, gets no respect from me. I was looking forward to a good bombshell update, but this isn't it. The figure disappoints on many levels, and I give Deluxe Legacy Evolution Bombshell 5 out of 10 deaths. Hasbro's lack of effort on this figure is what really bugs me. If you refuse me, honey, you lose me, then you'll be left alone, old baby. Tell him all, and tell him I'm your own.